welcome to the Amid Life Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, hello, everybody. It's Laura from the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we are exploring Ireland through the voices, the minds, and opinions of locals who live there and travelers who've been there. And today we have an episode for anyone out there who is curious what kind of cool experiences that you can discover for yourself when you visit Ireland And in this episode, we're doing something different. I'm sitting down with my friend Cindy Lowe from One Perfect Day in Travel. And she is a travel writer. She writes guidebooks, blogs, and she's also a travel podcaster. And we decided to just sit down and compare some notes. We said we would limit ourselves to our top three experiences in Ireland And then, of course, we got so excited about a lot of the things we're talking about, you probably get more than six experiences out of this total conversation. So you're going to hear about things like uh, taking a boat ride around what's considered the eye of Ireland. You're going to hear about Irish pub music, Irish food. You're going to hear about ancient sites like stone carns and hieroglyphics and of a museum in Dublin that has some of the world's oldest writings of religion across a whole variety of faiths. And we're going to talk about some hiking, biking, and kayaking opportunities in and around Ireland. So if you're planning a trip to Ireland, I hope you buckle up and enjoy this episode. I have a friend here, Cindy Lowe, who I met in Killarney, Ireland. And Cindy is a travel blogger and a travel podcaster and she has this fantastic ability to organize trips and find unique things that I probably would never find if I tried and she's written guidebooks and well I'll let Cindy introduce herself. Well it's great to be with you Laura and um, we've just struck up such a good friendship and I think it's because we both love travel so much and realize how much it benefits (laughs) our lives in so many ways. My podcast is One Perfect Day in Travel. And as a busy person all my life in my career as an educator, I always would really value my valuable travel time and I would try to figure out how to plan everything so that when I got there, every day would be perfect. Now, realizing that you can plan as much as possible. Yeah, there's a lot of work in advance that goes into exactly. that. Exactly. And, and you can plan everything, and things still don't go as you plan. But sometimes the things that don't go well are actually the things that make it <laughs> the most perfect, Agreed. As, as you know. So um, it's a little tongue-in-cheek, one perfect day in travel. But that's um, – anyway, my goal is to help other people – who maybe um, are busy like I was when I was working so hard to um, take advantage of my research to have the best trip that they can and find those special experiences um, that maybe they don't have time to research in advance. So, for example, one little tip. Did you know that every Saturday night, the London Eye at 5.30 has a wine-tasting tour on the London Eye? So you can book wow. that in advance, and while you're visiting London, even if you just have that one perfect day, if it's a Saturday, you not only get to learn about London as you take that tour, but your sommelier, who's in your private car with your other wine tasters on the London Eye, will give you a taste of a variety of wines as well. Wow. See, that's a great experience. So so this is not just any guidebook. This is a unique secrets type guidebook that, that Cindy puts together and writes. So Cindy did do a couple of podcast episodes about her travels in Ireland, and she's getting ready to publish a new book on Dublin. So we are going to do a a couple of episodes featuring Cindy and talking about some of these secrets. But today, 
we're just going to talk back and forth and share our lists, our three cool experiences that each of us had in Ireland. So you can go first, Cindy. What was one of your favorite experiences? Okay, one thing I did on this trip to Ireland, this was my second trip. Uh, that was really fun. Um, we took a day trip out of Dublin to a little town called Hoth on the Irish Sea, and I would recommend everybody that's, that goes to Dublin try to take a half day to do it. So you take a little 30-minute, um, like a, a metro train, out to Hoth, and then they have these guys that just sit alongside of the water in little boats, and if the wind is not too bad, you get on a little boat that holds maybe 15 people, and they take you out around an island that has this structure in the middle of it, like a, a little stone mountain kind of structure, and it's called Ireland's Eye. Huh. And the ancient Irish believed that basically it was the eye to the heart of Ireland. And when you go oh. around it um, on these little boats and the sea captain is telling you about it, it is almost a mystical type experience. And it's like, you know, about maybe 20 euro cash that you pay them when you go around. And it depends on when they get enough people and if the weather's calm enough. But it is just a great, fun thing. And the little town of Hoth, it's H-O-W-T-H, but it rhymes with growth. So uh, <laughs> as an American, I want to say health, but it's Hoth. Um, it's wonderful. And I did do a little blog on our day there because we wound up spending a whole day um, did a little, put together a little walking tour. We had a delicious lunch there on the dock of seafood mm. at the Aqua restaurant, which is very good. But just um, that little visit to Hoth and getting that taste outside of Dublin of this little town and Ireland's eye was really special. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. I'd not heard of that before. That's a great idea. I'm going to put for my first one, I signed up for a day tour, which was to see Celtic history sites. And we got to go to some old abbeys and to go to Trim Castle, where part of Braveheart was filmed. But my experience, and it's part because I overcame a fear, is going to a place called Lothcrew Carnes. And Lothcrew Carnes is a 5,000-year-old carn that... Inside, there's hieroglyphics. Like the the largest carn people think of as Newgrange. This is like a mini Newgrange that's lesser known. Okay. And I say the fear because I've always been a little nervous about closed spaces, like claustrophobia a bit. I wasn't even sure if I would go in because you put headlamps on, you have to duck, go through this tunnel, and you go inside with flashlights and you see hieroglyphics. And when I got in there, it was so darn cool. I wasn't even scared at all. Cool. So, anyways, it was just what a part cool, of like, Ireland I felt, is it? Uh, County Meath. Okay. County Meath. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the sites that we were in on that whole tour was, were all in the County Meath area. That's great. Well, that sounds really neat. I went all the way to Newgrange, and I'm claustrophobic, yeah. too. Oh, okay. And my <laughs> husband went in and took pictures for me. And I, I just, I regretted that more than anything else, probably about any trip I've ever been on is not going inside the carn and, at Newgrange. And when you go to some of those ancient sites, it's a, they're a place that you feel it when you're yeah. there. So, I mean, the pictures are interesting. They're beautiful, but they just look like piles of rocks. But when you're standing there, it's a type of thing that you feel. You yeah. feel the history. and yeah. So, for me, that was really cool. Seeing, like, at Newgrange, they have the stone out front that was found in the 1950s when they discovered Newgrange, and a farmer was out plowing his field. And he turned over this 12-foot-long, 3-foot-high stone with the ancient Irish writings on it. And he realized, oh, I better stop. I have found something here. That's the similar story to Lothcrew. It was a farmer who was excavating and taking stones to build something else and moving it and then realized, oh, wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> this is something else. So, yeah, very cool. Okay, so what is your next cool experience? So another cool uh, experience on a different level, when we were in Killarney, um, we had heard about a place called Murphy's Bar that's also a restaurant and a pub and a little hotel. And um, my husband <laughs> and I went there, and every night different musicians show up, and they 
play session music, real Irish music that they all join in on, and it's just so authentic. And we loved it, had a great uh, fish and chips dinner there as well. But just being part of a lot of locals and tourists as well, joining together and enjoying great Irish session music, that was a real highlight for us. Well, so that's right on the main street of Clarney, right? It's, right. it's one of the first ones as you go down the main street. It and you've is. Got and Reedy and right other. there in the heart it's of town. Such a, one thing about Killarney that I appreciate is it, it's just such a cool walking town. And that's kind of like the parties in Killarney. And I don't mean that everyone's getting just blitzed and partying. I just mean people are in a good mood. Like you said, there's music, there's friends, it's fun, there's locals. Yes, in fact, I was going to write one blog on Killarney. There is so much to do there. I can't remember how many I did. I know I have one just about the town I called Two Perfect Days in Killarney. Because <laughs> you can't even just do one oh, perfect day it. in I the town. It. it is such a wonderful place. I'd love to go back there. I could easily spend two weeks in that Killarney area and just explore the whole uh, area, including, of course, it's not that far from the Dingle Peninsula. <gasps> Oh, lead in. Yeah. That's what I was going to choose for my next experience. But <laughs> I think might have enjoyed that. Yeah. So um, another tour that I did was driving out, and so you can get get on. You can drive yourself out to the Dingle Peninsula, or there are tours that leave from Limerick, or also from Killarney, mm-hmm. and such a gorgeous drive. You're on a coastline. You go past this beach, this local's beach called Inch Beach, and there's people surfing. These stops along the way are just It's a relaxing day, and the scenery is gorgeous everywhere you go. But there's a town um, called Dingle, and they have a dolphin whose name, I'm going to say it's like Furby. I might be getting the name wrong, but they they literally had this dolphin that was, I think, abandoned as a baby, and now it's sort of like Mm -hmm. the town dolphin and hangs out. I had the best fish and chips of my life there. Oh, wow. Uh, I met the bossiest seagull (laughs) of my life because I made the mistake of feeding the seagulls. But the Dingle tour beyond that, I just, when I signed up, I wasn't even sure what I signed up for, but there's, you go all the way up to Slay Head and Sybil Head, and um, that's actually where they filmed a lot of the Star Wars, the mm-hmm. last movie they just had, um, right. Rogue. So, and we heard a story about how Luke Skywalker in, what, the one before this, so he's, they, he was at this monastery, which is actually an island called Skellig Michael. Yes. But just the waves of tourism after that little glimpse of Skellig Michael mm-hmm. on that one Star Wars, drove enough tourists there, and tourists were taking pieces. They were desecrating like a 5,000-year-old monastery. Oh. So when Star Wars came back and said, okay, we want to film now, our tour guide told us a story. They said, we can't have you filming at this UNESCO heritage site because the tourists are basically right. destroying it. Mm-hmm. And this is a you know thousands and thousands of years of history. So you can create a replica. And so they create a replica of the beehive huts over in, I think it's called Sybil Head in that area. And it's just a gorgeous coastline. And you can see in other parts of the movie where this region actually inspired the show. And one of my favorite moments was not just seeing all of the beautiful history and the scenery, but these couple human moments. Um, One was we pulled over to take pictures of the water and I looked up, and there was a sign that said, Hold a baby lamb, and it just had an arrow. Oh. And it went across the street, and I just followed the sign. I was yes. like, Hold a baby lamb. <laughs> and there's this little farm with little huts, little stone huts, and I think I paid three euros. And I got to hold this little baby lamb and walk through their beehive huts, and this baby lamb cried when I left. And it was like it was Aww. like this emotional, touching yeah. moment for me to hold this baby lamb. And then the very next stop we had... I was enjoying the scenery, taking the same photo as all the other tourists because you get off the bus and right. you start taking photos. But I closed my eyes so I wanted to kind of see, you know, could I smell the salt in the air? And I realized there was music playing. So I turned to follow where the music was, and there, I'm going to assume it was a fisherman because he still had his fishing gear, um, sitting on the side playing an instrument, playing a flute, and just playing music. And I stopped and talked to him about five minutes and bought one of his CDs. And it was just like this really wonderful experience yeah, to hear special. the local. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. So um, when we went to um, Dingle, I didn't do that on this trip when we had a car. And it was when we were in Dublin. And one thing that I figured out we could do is you can take a train from Dublin early in the morning to 
somewhere nearby and paddy wagon tours that they have the vans that will take you out to Dingle. They take people every day. They will come pick you up at the train station, take you on the all-day tour of Dingle, bring you back, and you take the last train back to Dublin. So oh, Paddy Wagons, who I went on oh, my tour yeah, with. Yeah, I thought they were really good. And, um, you know, for people who are listening that might say, well, I'm in Dublin, I don't really have time to get to Dingle, and it is kind of hard to drive to, you can do a day trip. You just have to get from Dublin to um, whatever the nearest town is with the train, and Paddy Wagon will pick you up. So that was fun. It was, it's a long day. But as you know, it's just wonderful and definitely worth going to. So speaking of Dublin, um, my third favorite thing, or, well, I don't know. There's probably 20. But one other thing that I really enjoyed in Dublin is um, visiting the Chester Beatty Library in Dublin Castle. It's free to visit. And they have the oldest religious writings in the world. Ooh. And um, what is I really it called? The Chester, Chester Beatty. It looks like Beatty, Beatty to okay. me, but it's okay, Beatty, B-E-A-T-T-Y. Okay. And um, it has the oldest religious writings in the world. And I had the opportunity to interview the curator of Western Collections. Um, one of the things I was interested in, uh, they have the oldest writings of the books of the Bible. Um, they have the oldest collection of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in one Uh, papyri or collection of writings that's ever been found and uh, that dates to the year 150 AD and then they have um, one piece of text of the book of Revelation that was the oldest piece that's ever been found of that book and it dates to around 100 AD so it was really interesting seeing those documents and learning yeah. a little bit about the history. So I know you're writing a book about Dublin. Is mm-hmm. this we're going to hear about this more? Yeah, because I've never heard of this before. Yes, and I you said it's a free it thing is that you a can do. Free, in- um, and it's part of Dublin yeah. Castle. Um, and Chester Beatty, who was an American, but he also became an Irish citizen. His mission in life was to collect the oldest religions religious writings in the world. So the library also contains some of the oldest writings from Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, as well as Christianity. And the uh, Dublin Tourism Association has opened the library to the public for free. So definitely that Hmm. will be in my book, as well as, of course, visiting the Book of Kells and all of the wonderful things that there are to see and do in Dublin. I could spend a month just in <laughs> Dublin. It's As you know, Ireland is wonderful. Yeah, it's a place of very rich in history and culture, and I had no idea that the world's oldest writings of all these different religions were in one place yes, in Ireland. love it. And, you know, the Irish people as you have found, are so friendly and so willing to share what they know and their culture and their background. Um, I think it just makes Ireland one of the most friendly places in the world to visit. And when I listen to your podcast, I really get that flavor of the Irish people as I listen. (laughs) They are friendly. They're fun. They have good stories. They have a good time. Good crack, as they like to call it. Good crack, meaning good fun. I'm really having a hard time on my number three because I have like three things tied in my head. So I'm going to kind of cheat on this okay. because there are physical activities. Mm-hmm. So one, I'm going, to do, I'm going to take a bike, a hike, and a kayak. So the bike is biking through Killarney National Park. Oh, yes. Killarney National Park is just, I barely touched what I, you could do on, but you can actually bike and hike, kayak and do jaunting cars. There's so much you can do. But I, I did a two and a half hour bike ride in Killarney National Park in Beautiful Tom Castle. There. It was yes. wonderful. That's the bike. The hike. Oh my gosh, Giants Causeway. Mm. Have you? Did you I get up there? I have not. No. I w- that's on my bucket list. And when for I went sure. to Giants Causeway, it was just pouring down oh, rain. No. But that didn't stop me. Mm-hmm. The, our guide said, "Okay, you can go down below and get shots like this and take a shuttle, or if you hike up here, you get spectacular views." So everyone else on the bus went down below, and I take off on the hike. Sure. But I wasn't listening to like how far you go or stop. So I literally just like hiked out in the rain. 
for about 40 minutes. I had these stunning views of cliffs, uh-huh. and it was just Maybe it's because I was soaking wet and I had to work for it. But it was just yeah. like, it, it felt like a very impactful, and it was isolated. No one else was really out there. So oh, it just was really a cool wonderful. experience. And then part of that tour also went to a place where you go across a rope bridge, Carica Rede rope, rope Bridge. So that's the hike and the bike. And then really briefly, I got to meet a really cool couple, uh, John and Marie. They own Atlantic Sea Kayaking oh. in down in the Cork area, and they do kayak tours. They're like one of the number one top-rated um, activities in Ireland is oh. this nighttime kayaking tour. Mm-hmm. We didn't get to do the nighttime one, but they yeah. did this tour on the port of Cork. And I told you I was a little afraid of uh, claustrophobia. Yes. I'm also kind of nervous around deep water. Mm-hmm. And I was in a kayak. It was a two-person kayak, so I wasn't completely alone. But we kayaked between massive standing fishing vessels oh. on the port of Cork mm-hmm. at sunset. And it was cool. Yeah. I was nervous, mm-hmm. but it was cool. So and Cork, That I, port is beautiful there yeah. in Cork. It's been so great talking with you. I feel like we can still continue and just share more on Ireland. Maybe we will in yeah. other episodes. But definitely, yeah. I'm going to have you back. They say the world is a book. So thanks for listening to the Midlife Traveler podcast. If you're looking for any of the resources that were mentioned in today's episode, please go online to our website at amidlifetraveler.com. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks.